Hey friends, so I wanted to show you how I made this cute DIY fringe skirt. And this was my inspiration. I think this girl looks so fabulous. And here we go. So if you're anything like me, you are a hippie girl or curvy girl, go ahead and grab a jersey or ballpoint needle. Grab you some one yard of a stretch knit or jersey material because it will make a major difference in the fitting of your skirt. You also want to want anything with too much structure because you want it to be able to stretch and show off them curves. Go for it, girl. So ladies, please remember to grab a coordinating thread because this will show on the outside. You're going to actually be sewing on the seam allowance. So make sure it coordinates with your fabric because it will be very visible. See pictured here, you will need a pair of scissors, a hip or curved ruler, a yardstick, pins, and a yard of fabric at least. So for me, I went ahead and grabbed my favorite fitted skirt, one that actually fits my waist and hip, so that I have that nice waist to hip ratio. And I'm gonna use this to create my pattern for the outline of my skirt. So first to get the length, I'm gonna measure from my belly button down to my ankle on my body. Then I will actually use the yardstick to measure from the top of this skirt down to the bottom of where I want my fabric to stop. You base it on your preference. However, I wanted mine to be more of a longer length, but I did not want it dragging. I'm about 5'4", so I was actually probably the entire length of a yardstick. I did in the end uh, chop off about two inches so that it actually stopped right in my ankles and I would be able to pair my skirt with a nice pair of heels. Remember what I like most about DIY is you can make it however you like. If you want to stop it about mid-calf, you have that freedom as well. Okay, so for this next step, it's a little tricky. You have two different ways you can do it. First step is you can actually measure your around your belly button or the smallest part of where you want your waistband to fall. You're going to take that full measurement, split it in two, measure across the fabric, and mark those two spots. So let's say your waist is 30 inches, then you're going to do 15 and 15. So that will be 15 across. However, for you to get the actual fringe and allow that seam allowance, you want to add six to eight inches on each side of that half of your waist size measurement. Me using the skirt, I simply use the skirt because it's going to fall exactly where I want my waistband to sit. And then I actually added eight inches to each side. That's going to give me more than enough room to create the fringe size that I like. Remember, you can always take it in once you actually do a fitting, but it is very important to allow yourself to have enough seam allowance so that you can play with your measurements as well as have an actual fringe that you like. Now that you have your measurements, including your waistband and your six to eight inches seam allowance, go ahead and cut your fabric on both sides. You should be left with a really long rectangular piece. If you want, you can actually cut the length down, determining uh, if you are comfortable with this length or you can wait until you actually have sewn your skirt together. Y'all, let's get into this waistband. So I actually created a four inch wide strip to make my waistband. However, feel free go to go down to eight, just depending on how wide you want your waistband. And we're just talking about the width of the waistband. Then you're gonna take that yardstick with your waist measurement, go ahead and cut out a strip that will be the length. If you don't have quite enough, go ahead and cut on the fold line of any of your selvage. And that will actually create this strip that you see right here. Before I demonstrate how I did this next step, I just want to share with you a few tips when you go to make your uh, measurements or mark your um, markings for your hip and your waist. Please keep in mind that my waist and my hip is a, a wide difference. So please make sure that not only do you use your markings, you can utilize that skirt if you have a skirt that you are using uh, to duplicate or feel free to use your measurements. Um, or you can actually measure the fabric up against your body, which I actually pinned 
And I would highly recommend you make that big contrast between your waist and your hip because as you will see, my first go round, it was a big difference and I had to go back and correct a lot. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate for you how you're going to use these rulers uh, to get, get that nice curve for your hip and waist. Yeah, so go ahead and make three markings. You're going to fold your fabric in half. You're going to make one, two, and three. One being your hip, two being your knee, and three being your ankle. Using this curved ruler, you're going to go ahead and connect the dots. What I forgot to say is if you have um, your measurements at these three spots, go ahead and divide them into four. When you fold the fabric on half, that is going to be the measurements for the hip, the waist, the knee, and the ankle. those three markings and your line is straight enough you're going to go ahead and mirror those markings on all four sides head over to the sewing machine be sure to thread your bobbin place your thread in place and select a straight seam and this is the stitching that i use feel free to use whatever is comfortable to you Okay, so you're going to go ahead and place your two fabrics together, the front and back. You're going to actually sew down that seam line that you have marked out. Feel free to use pins. I am a little bit more um, comfortable with freehanding this because I already knew I was going to have to do some maneuvering. But um, use pins if you're more comfortable with that method. No, you will not be turning this fabric inside out, so you want to make sure your seams are very neat as you sew down the seam line on the seam allowance. As you can see, when I tried it, my skirt on, I had not taken enough in on the waist, and I do know where I went wrong with this. So please make sure you make those proper adjustments between that waist and hip ratio. So you can see how I made my adjustment. If you look to the left, that's the original seam line, and to the right is where it should have been placed. I know I uh, mistakenly overlooked that when I sewed that down the first time. So this is how I went in and made that change. For my girls that have those super small waists, you can definitely use this curved ruler to make those adjustments. For those that don't have as much of a curve, yours will be a little bit... Um, less difficult because you can use more of a straighter line remember the fringe will actually take care of any awkwardness shapes as far as when it's sewn down so we're going to move that seam line over so that it encompasses that new waistline okay so i am going to cheat a little bit and start from that side seam line and go up to the waistband however if you would prefer feel free to start down from the lower end and sew up until the waistline but this is how i'm going to actually take care of that odd difference between my waist and my hip it is please do not reinforce your stitches you will not be moving in that skirt so you're going to take that waistband piece that you had and you're going to sew the two ends together then you will actually go ahead and fold that in half and we're going to attach it to the waist I always start by finding the center points on the front and back of all my skirts and pants. And then from that marking, I actually pinned the back of that waistband in the center back. And then I actually pin it in the front middle. And then from there, I pin the sides and then work in the wrist so that therefore there's a nice even split between the connection between the waistband and as you can see right here this is where you would actually fold that over as you can see i have worked the waistband in so that it's nice and even even though there is that gap between the waist and the hip this is actually going to be an easy connection between the waistband and the top of the skirt you can go ahead and use pins, uh, clips. 
And as you see, once it's actually connected, that seam allowance will still be in place. And that is where the magic is going to happen. And we're going to make those beautiful fringes. You have sewn those sides together and that waistband is connected. This is looking a little rough, but this, remember, is not smooth. Um, it's just to give you a rough idea of what you're looking at. At this point, you should have your sides together, your waistband connected. And mind you, I'm not wearing my proper undergarments, so bear with me is the fringe remember the thinner the strips the more fringe you are going to get and you're just going to cut along that seam allowance not going all the way to the edge because again we want to leave the security of that knit fabric um to reinforce that once it should be your final result um i am loving this fringe skirt this is not the best few because i was still in my sewing phase but this gives you an idea of the movement and texture you should have with that fringe so simple so easy if i was not recording this video i would have been done a lot sooner but check it out for more of this look please follow me on all social media platforms or just check me out, subscribe to Indie Soul on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you.